We have an expression in Britain. It says the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I think in this case we should just change it to the road to hell is bovade with good intentions. Now, I do not dispute the principle of national sovereignty over genetic resources. I do, have a, however, seriously question the Commission's ability to successfully engage with the Nagoya Protocol on behalf of British commerce. This protocol is an international agreement giving access to and sharing the benefits from genetic research. The Commission proposal addresses the obligations to be imposed on the use of of users of genetic resources for businesses in the EU member states in order to comply with the protocol. Frankly, if we were looking for a neat, effective and clever way to prevent all use of genetic resources for research and innovation, we would write what is contained in this draft opinion. It creates obligations so complicated, so onerous and so unattractive for the actual commercial users in the real world that the end result would be to ensure that no user in the whole of the EU will carry out any such research which falls within the scope of this regulation. Now, coming from UKIP, if the rest of the EU, EU is stupid enough to go down this route and ensure yet another sector of European commerce becomes globally uncompetitive through excessive regulation, then that is up to them. However, the UK is something of a world leader in this area. The English agricultural revolution in the early 18th century paved the way for us to use husbandry and selective breeding to achieve such a respected status. Two centuries later, we are still at the top. But not for much longer if the EU is allowed to meddle and interfere as proposed by Jose Bove. At the John Innes Centre in Norwich, a few miles from where I live, the UK holds massive seed banks of small grain cereal seeds and the second largest collection of pea germplasm in Europe. Over the years, research projects involving scientists and breeders have allowed the identification and development of new sources of disease resistant and seed varieties with improved tolerance of drought, salinity and aluminium. Only by encouraging collaboration between scientists and breeders will we achieve the necessary investments to increase and sustain crop yields at a time of growing food demand and sh the shrinking of arable land by urban development. But once again, regardless of all of that and against common sense, what the EU seems to be trying to achieve is to imprison our industry and our researchers with a set of burdensome, complicated and nonsensical obligations that will only apply in Europe, while all other regions of the world are making it easy, as easy as possible, for their farmers and businesses to have access to genetic resources. And if there is no access to this genetic, genetic material, then can be, there can be no benefit sharing from it. So the end result will be the usual EU disaster where everybody loses, no financial gain for the providing country and no beneficial research in Europe. This is not just a shot in the foot, it's the machine gunning of both legs. And I've been here long enough now not to expect anything else. But when it is likely to destroy a world leading institution in my constituency and a British record of 250 years of such leadership, I have to ask the French the Greens and Jose Bove, is this nothing more than revenge for Agincourt? I, perhaps against my will, agree to an extent with Mr Agnew. I mean, how are we going to manage to get hold of functioning legislation that will enable us to attain our objectives without overcomplicating things? This is a pretty big challenge for all of us. Now, if you then look at what the Commission has put forward, if you read through that and then read what Mr Beauvais has made out of it and this whole breeders exemption is being called into question because we're creating a model which de facto, and here I agree with Mr Agnew, it would mean that the system would be too complicated and it would mean that breeding in Europe would become difficult. So here we're not thinking just of Monsanto, PSF or whoever, but it means, you know, breeding is something which is carried out by a lot of small holdings. And I don't think that we should not, I don't think we should make their lives difficult, and I certainly don't think we should make their lives impossible.